the Talmud, the primary source of Jewish religious law says, do not be daunted by the enormity of the world's grief. Do justly now, love mercy now, walk humbly now. You are not obligated to complete the work, but neither are you free to abandon it. Within the Abrahamic faiths, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam lies the inextricable connection between social justice and spirituality. Each is rooted in political struggles and struggles for liberation. Moses declaring to the Pharaoh, let my people go in the story of the Exodus from Egypt is a story of liberation that appears in the Torah, the Bible, and the Quran is just one example. What these three faiths ha also have in common is the shared interest in what happens in the Holy Land to Israel and to the Palestinian people. The past few weeks, there have been rising tensions and violence that has not been seen in many years. I'm gonna start with sharing a May 14th Facebook post by Liz Loeb. I have her permission to read this post. She is a Jewish activist, attorney, and community organizer based in Minneapolis. On May 14th, Liz wrote, Tender friends and dearest of humans, as Shabbat and Shavuot draws near, I know that there can be no silence while Palestinian families are being terrorized in their homes. As a Jew, I want nothing more than to pretend this isn't being done by people who claim my lineage. I want to talk about Christian Zionists, and we must, and I want to talk about the crimes of United States foreign policy and collective trauma and fundamentalism, and we must, but none of that is the real and whole truth. The real and whole truth is I am watching people who call themselves Jews wage unbridled violence against an entire people, and that feels unbearable. I know how to take action, how to march and organize political pressure and bear witness. I will continue to do all of these things. I will proclaim as loudly and publicly as I can that my love and my solidarity are with my Palestinian siblings. I will resist the violence of the Israeli state with the tools that are mine to use, and I know that it is not enough. My fellow Jews, she continues, I know we have wandered. I know we have fled with our families in the night, longing for home, longing for some sense of place that felt maybe, maybe, maybe this time safe enough. I know that so many of us have hoped and prayed that the state of Israel might mean we wouldn't have to run anymore. I know we are frightened, but there can be no home for us that requires a bomb. There can be no home for us that means betraying our most sacred command to preserve all life as holy. And there can be no home for us that comes from occupying the home of another. We know, we must know, that what the state of Israel is doing in Palestine is a wrong beyond wrong. It shakes the core of what we know as Jews, and we are not going to be okay until we find some way to make it stop. I know that some part of me wants to cling to some tiny and hollow way not to condemn the state of Israel because I am so scared that unless I can find some justification for these atrocities, my non-Jewish friends will turn on us. They will stop believing that anti-Semitism is real and they will leave us alone to face what comes. But nothing can justify the actions of the Israeli government and military right now, nothing, not our history, not the Shoah, not even my own fear. There are no justifications. There is simply this, <clears throat> Palestine should be free. <clears throat> Palestine must be free. I don't know what comes next, but I hope you will join me. May the source of creation that holds the world, hold the people of Palestine with love and protection tonight. Thank you, Liz, for that reflection. There is unease and uncertainty among liberals, even Unitarian Universalists, to naming clearly that the Palestinian people deserve freedom and the right to live in peace and with dignity. 
that the actions of the Israeli government are unconscionable and severe and contribute to the ongoing violence and horror that has been perpetrated against the oppressed Palestinians. The unease comes from the understandable fear of a rise in anti-Semitism among those who criticize the actions of the Israeli government. I want to state clearly that criticizing a nuclear power, a government that is characterized by military crackdowns and oppression is not anti-Semitic in and of itself. It is right to affirm the human rights of the oppressed. Unitarian Universalists are called on to affirm the rights of black and indigenous people who for centuries have been subject to systemic oppression. Here, criticizing the United States government is not tantamount to criticizing any one faith. This reasoning needs to be applied to how we name the oppression caused by the Israeli government toward the Palestinian people. Stressing that we must be mindful of anti-Semitism and being clear that we are not disparaging the Jewish faith or Jewish people is very personal for me. I am an Arab raised Muslim who married a Jewish man for 27 years and had two children. My two children have a strong part of their identity, identity their Jewish heritage. Their father's four parents are all Jews whose families immigrated to the United States between the world wars from Ukraine, Germany, and Austria. The two people I love most in the world very much identify with their Jew Jewish lineage as much as they do their Arab and Sudanese lineage. We as Unitarian Universalist people of faith must be nuanced, sensitive and compassionate when talking about a free Palestine. Having a stable Israel and a free Palestine are not mutually exclusive concepts. However, it is a concept that is almost impossible to talk about because of the unfortunate conflation of anti-Semitism and criticism of the Israeli government. We must have truth telling about what is happening in Israel and only then can we have a way out, even start talking about a way out of this seemingly impossible quagmire. I'm gonna shift gears for a minute and talk about collective trauma and the understandable fear of the Jewish people. The individual and collective trauma of the Holocaust cannot be overstated. Sociologist Kai Erickson eloquently describes the similarities and differences between individual and collective trauma and their impact on the self in the book, Everything in Its Path. Quote, by individual trauma, I mean a blow to the psyche that breaks through one's defenses so suddenly and with such brutal force that one cannot react to it effectively. By collective trauma, on the other hand, I mean a blow to the basic tissues of social life that damages the bonds attaching people together and impairs the prevailing sense of communality. The collective trauma works its way slowly and even insidiously into the awareness of those who summer, suffer from it. So it is a gradual realization that the community no longer exists as an effective source of support and that an important part of the self has disappeared. We no longer exist as a connected pair or as linked cells in a larger communal body, end quote. After the Holocaust, it is understandable that there needed to be repair and a reconstruction of the communities and the fabric that was lost, that was lost of the Jewish people. And it is due to political insensitivity and a lack of understanding of the Middle East region that the way the events played out in the creation of the Jewish state is why there remains violence and oppression of an entire people, the Palestinians. I also would be remiss in not naming that the tactics of the Israeli government are modeled after settler colonialism and mirror some of the ways that the United States engaged in land theft and disregarding treaties of indigenous peoples here in the United States. I do not have 
an easy answer to the rampant and horrific oppression and violence being perpetrated by a powerful government on a group of people who are not allowed dignity or rights. I do know that as Unitarian Universalists, we are called to truth telling with compassion and care, naming that the Israeli government is committing atrocities and crimes against humanity is not anti-Semitic. We honor and love the Jewish faith and Jewish people. Truth telling, we must continue to do with compassion and care, truth telling with sensitivity and with love, truth telling without anti-Semitism, without condemning a people or a religion, truth telling by naming that a powerful police state, the Israeli government has the onus on them to bring peace and to stop the brutalizing oppression of the Palestinian people. Israelis and Palestinians throughout Israel have been posting on social media together to call an end to the violence. We need to expand our imaginations. The United States needs to use its political power to help bring an end to this violence. Again, I do not have the answer. I only know as a religious leader and as part of a faith that centers social justice, we must be truthful and name that truth with compassion and care. I will say that over and over with compassion and care. Jews in favor of a free Palestine, a Palestinian state have condemned the actions of the Israeli government. And I'm going to end by repeating the words of Liz Loeb. There can be no home for us that requires a bomb. There can be no home that means betraying our most sacred command to preserve all life is holy. And there can be no home for us that comes from occupying the home of another. Blessed be, amen, and ashe.